Hey, welcome back with Tom Ritchie, and uh, certainly an exciting time for, for you, and this has to be the coolest bike at the show. Tell me about a little bit about what we got here. Uh, well, this is the real thing. When I get to Rwanda and I uh, started riding around and I realized how important the bike was to them, I started looking. They, had, they were riding uh, your traditional 100-year-old technology and uh, it was beaten down, broken down, and uh, overloaded in a hilly environment. So they needed gears, they needed brakes, and you could see that uh, the way that they repaired their bikes was a welder and a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, you know uh, blacksmith techniques and uh, rebar and chunks of things that were welded on, reinforcing things. And then I started to realize um, that because of that, they were making their own technology, and and. These bikes were in common use on the dirt roads, and I got drawn into them and realized everyone's an individual creation. They, they're meant to carry hundreds of pounds, um, whether they be potatoes or coffee or wood or supplies or whatever. They're pushing these all around Rwanda, and it's one of their unique kind of uh, uh, individual treasures that they created themselves. I, I checked, you know, local countries, and it seems like Rwanda is the place that they invented these. And it's, this is not a replica. This is actually a bike from Rwanda. This is a real bike that I uh, we brought about. Uh, every time we go over, we try to bring a couple of them back. And I just got back, and we brought five of them. This is one of the first ones that I brought back. They come just all different configurations, all different, of course, wheel size. The wood, the wheels are wood. They're, you know, they're, this one's been well used, as you can see. It's got suspension in it. It's got brakes. Um, it's got a headset that kind of works in a, in a way that uh, both adds suspension. If you jump on this thing, these things expand. It's, it's you know, they've thought things through. It's interesting. I mean, as, as a bike maker yourself, when you look at something like this, I mean, do, do, does it give you any inspiration? Do you have product ideas like the, kind of the back and the forth that would, uh, I would imagine as you, as you look at a bike like this, it's got to at least make you start thinking? Um, well, actually, it did. And uh, when I first saw it, I wasn't really prepared where it was going. I just walked through a door and didn't have any idea where the store was leading. Um, it brought me back to... Uh, basically my roots in uh, terms of a bike builder and the mountain bike and some of the things that uh, I had the chance to be a part of and uh, and think about just how to how to create a, a lift in technology in Rwanda that wasn't there and it and it surprised me as a as somebody that was new to traveling in the third world how little I mean, how much how much incredible need there is there to do things with a bike and how much a bike is important to them when you look at this and you realize what they what they did for themselves because the need was so great um, I thought started to think how do you see the technology in a third world country like that and it be sustainable um, and and so anyway uh, long story short I uh, I ran into some coffee farmers and realized that they were the first people getting a lift in terms of an economic opportunity. There was 500,000 small crop farmers. They all practically tend a, a small quarter, a half acre patch of land, and it's their heirloom ability to manage that business that attracted me. But the problem was is, is that they could do the best job in the world growing the coffee, managing it, picking it. But the time that it took for them to transport that to the washing station was what they couldn't control. And so I built an economic model with Texas A&M and, uh, and designed a special bike that could haul coffee cherries uh, in a couple hours rather than this undetermined time. And uh, we launched that, uh, did a rapid uh, development process, launched that this last coffee season, which ended in June. So we got bikes there in April when they were just picking their cherries, May, June. And we had, uh, uh, you know, we paint, I painted them green so they would look different. They wouldn't be black like, you know, the traditional bike. And we had an amazing res uh, response. Um, and uh, basically we're, uh, we're getting, you know, a lot of attention from the rest of Rwanda and outlying countries that are all coffee growers. I mean, anywhere it's hilly, 
and and it's a jungle type environment in Africa. It's a good place to grow coffee. Ethiopia, Kenya, of course, you know, are popular for coffee, and so they're they're all looking at this as a needed tool that the farmer can afford. That you can build a lift in the price of coffee price that they get to to afford the bike, and that's and that's what we're looking for is a sustainable way that they can receive a bike by the lift in price that they get from delivering the coffees faster.